We have here with us today Dr. Kumud Mehta, a consultant pediatrician and pediatric nephrologist and a true stalwart in her field. We have a small talk today on renal tubular acidosis. Ma'am will share her experiences with us on this topic. What is renal tubular acidosis? Kidney is a very important organ which maintains the balance and allows the metabolic functions of the body to take place. And one of the vital functions of the kidney is to neutralize the acid which is formed from the metabolism of proteins, carbohydrates and fats which we consume for our daily requirement. And this mechanism is done by the kidney tubules and it is called the renal acidification. Now, due to known or unknown cause, when the renal tubules fail to do this function, then we come across a group of disorders which are called renal tubular acidosis. In short, the kidney is not doing only one single function that is neutralizing the acid from the metabolism which, is, which it requires to do. How common is this condition? It's not really such a common condition. But the importance is that if you detect it earlier, then we can prevent the complications which arise because of renal tubular acidosis. In fact, some of the renal tubular acidosis present like very common conditions, such as malnutrition, failure to thrive, rickets, bony deformities, and short stretcher. And hence, you know, they are somehow or the other mixed with the common diseases and that's why there is a delay in diagnosis. The importance is to suspect and leave them from this common group of disorders. What is the complication of renal tubular acidosis? This acid which collects in the body, which the kidney is supposed to neutralize, this acts on the bones and it replaces the calcium from the bones. And that means it makes the bones soft. And that gives rise to the very severe deformities, sometimes fractures. And that is responsible for the shortness in these children. Plus this acidosis in very young infants can cause derangement of other electrolytes, such as it reduces the potassium from the body and it can even cause sometimes convulsions. So in very young infant, many a times before the diagnosis, the child can succumb to this less potassium in the body and that danger is always there. How can we treat renal tubular acidosis? The treatment is very simple. It is like, a, as we say, housewife's uh, kitchen treatment because it's a baking soda that we really give. Because we know soda bicarb neutralizes the acid from our you know, chemical chemistry. And what, all that one does after the you know, diagnosis is to give the oral alkali treatment. So it's sometimes a mixture of potassium citrate and sodium citrate because as I mentioned earlier, there could be less potassium in the blood and that is a serious thing. Or one can use just this soda bicarb tablet, soda mint, to neutralize the excess of acid. We need to give the appropriate dosage and we need to do repeated blood tests to find out whether there is a sustained correction of this acidosis. And that's the key issue. More often than not, the uh, treatment is simple, but the course is prolonged and hence uh, repeated follow-ups and um, what is called adjustment of the dosage of the oral alkali is very important. Is there any other treatment besides this or are all patients managed by this method? Initially we have to you know, neutralize the acid. Then if one is left with some bone problem as I mentioned earlier, then few cases may require some vitamin D. But on an average excess of calcium and vitamin D is harmful. Though externally they look like rickets as if you know they have vitamin D deficiency or calcium deficiency which is the commonest cause of rickets in young children. But these children are different that they have excess acid and that is why they have this rickettic you know deformities. So first is the you know treatment of the acidosis. 
addition of potassium and then if still there is a bony deformity left then we give vitamin D. What is the long term pro prognosis of RTA patients? If this disease is detected, there are four types of RTA. The commonest one is what we call classical or type 1 RTA or distal RTA. For this the treatment is the one which I mentioned and that after lifelong treatment if you diagnose it below the age of two years some of them you can't even make out that they are suffering from any such you know sort of prolonged disease but the main thing is one should diagnose below the age of two years before the de defects occur subsequently if the defects are very you know bad then uh, orthopedic correction of the defects may be required but that after we complete the treatment or the child needs to be still on the treatment while correcting these bony deformities. But rarely it so happens that there is a deposition of calcium in the kidney in these conditions which is called nephrocalcinosis. And this deposition of the calcium remains a permanent feature and may cause kidney damage ultimately resulting again in end stage renal disease. But this is a very, very rare complication of RTA. Uh, what about the other types of RTA? Yeah. There is another RTA which is called a proximal tubular acidosis in which it is not just the acidification defect but it is associated with multiple defects of the tubules. Like they, you know, lose phosphorus in the urine, they lose glucose in the urine and they also uh, lose amino acids. Now these amino acids are very important for our body because on which the protein synthesis is based. And these combined effects where RTA is a part and parcel of a syndrome is called Sanconi syndrome. And this is a very serious you know, type of a disease. It's not one defect but there are multiple defects and in this Comparative, the mortality is high and the results of the treatment are also not very good. Poor. The third type is what we call type 4 RTA. That is, there is nothing like type 3 RTA. There is type 1, type 2 and straightway type 4. And in type 4 RTA, there is excess of potassium in the body, surprisingly. And these usually occur with a number of uh, defects like obstructive, you know, defects of the kidney. They are rare but in that the only treatment difference is you give alkali treatment that of course is required but you don't give potassium. In fact you give something to bind the potassium and lower the potassium. So this shows the importance of doing these blood tests or electrolytes along with the acid you know sort of analysis and along with the x-rays of the bone and calcium phosphorus studies. To classify them correctly, then only one can treat properly. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us.